What is up guys, my name is Carson. This is my beautiful wife, Sammy, and we're the complete couple. And today we are taking you on a uh, transatlantic, I guess you would call it, over the ocean flight on Norse Atlantic. And uh, we're gonna see how it goes. We're doing like pretty much most of the upgrades there. It's definitely a new airline. It's a budget airline. It's super new. It only flies like four or five places. I'll put in exactly what upgrades we did, but we are at the front of the plane. We did include meal services. So we're gonna show you everything that they give you. If it's worth it, it's definitely less expensive than like British and stuff. So we're gonna see how it goes. We are going from MCO to London Gatwick. And then listen, you need to stick around because after that we are doing a 10 day cruise all over Europe. We're gonna hit Iceland, we're gonna hit Belgium. We're going to a bunch of places, so stick around, hit the subscribe button, and, and we'll, we'll see you at the airport. Alrighty, so if you are flying out of MCO again, Norris does not have a lot of places it will fly in and out of. We are here in Orlando MCO, but if you are, you are going to be in the beautiful Terminal C. So let's go see this check-in process. All right, so here we are at check-in, it's C14. Here is your little Hopefully they don't check it, because um, I can't really promise mine's gonna fit in there, but you know, we'll figure that out when we figure it out. We do have priority, which looks like that sign right there, so let's see how fast this priority goes. So just to show you, this is our flight. They do not have an app currently, and they do not give you your boarding passes prior, which is really different than other airlines. You cannot get a boarding pass before you actually get here and wait in line, which is really different. So you can't just do like your self-luggage tags or anything like that right when you get here, because again, you do not get a boarding pass, and you cannot check in until you are here in actual physical person then you will get it all right so we did do premium so this is what you get with it extra leg room sleep ready seats hassle free start which is skipping the lines which we really are doing actually pretty crazy we do have uh, meals so we didn't have to pay extra for them we get a little amenity kit so we'll see how it goes so the doors are about to open and we are gonna show you check-in we are all done something we didn't know so our bags needed to be 50 pounds the ones that we checked which we were all good your carry-on bags actually need to be weighed when you get there and for premium they could be 33 three pounds and for normal they can be 22 pounds kind of crazy I've never weighed a carry-on in my life mine weighed for reference and I packed a lot in it of exactly 30 Sammy's weighed exactly 22 I'm surprised I put a lot in there that's like shocking I don't know how and then again you don't get boarding passes until you're physically up there so no digital boarding pass so don't lose this <laughs> don't lose that because you're probably pretty screwed so there you go we're premium classic and our flight leaves at 8.25 and boarding is at 7.25, so an hour ahead, which I thought it was. Premium has their own line, however, it's slower than the regular line, I think. Yeah, I mean, depending on how many people are there, because there's only one girl per premium and there's like three or four people working for regular, so depending on how many people are there, depends on the it depends on which line you should honestly go in. So we're gonna go through security and show you, show you once we get on the plane. Here we go. Alrighty, so they just called one group before us, I think they called it pre-boarding, and then they called group one pretty much like two minutes after that so if you guys are doing priority it is very very fast and they did say you do still need your passports so get your passport get your boarding pass again it's not digital make sure you don't lose it and we're gonna get on the plane there we go retina scanners you gotta have your boarding pass she checks them as you enter the flight hi thanks so we go left perfect we're heading to the left feels a little old here we are, here's our seats. All right, so it's a bit of a tight squeeze, but here is the blanket you get and a pillow. I don't think you get the amenity kit. I thought that it said somewhere that you did. We're gonna wipe it down and then show you guys from there. Make sure you bring some wipes because, oh, it's crusted. Okay, so cleanliness, not my favorite, being honest. Service so far, I don't know, just not your normal premium or like upper class economy. However, the seats, are massive. They're huge. Like seriously. So they are quite spacious. I did read that I think they're the biggest seat in all of flying internationally between British and Virgin. Amenities wise they give you a pillow. Yeah, and a blanket. They give you a blanket. The blanket feels actually nice. Yeah, it's actually kind of a nice blanket. You cannot do the windows until you take off because it's not a shade. It's actually electronic, which is kind of cool. But we'll see how we like that later on. I'm not sure. Your left side, you're going to have your tray table. What do you do here? There we go. Look, that's nice. Folds out. Comes in. And that's as far out as it goes. This is your footrest. Oh, look at that. That's as far as that goes. This thing. There we go. Okay. Actually, I'll be honest with you, that is quite comfortable. That is actually quite comfortable. The seating so far, 10 out of 10. After further debate with Carson's help, we realized that this is down, this is up, this has nothing to do with your tray table. 
So up and down. <laughs> Chair situation got figured out. So let's see. So how to do this? You lift from the side there first. All right. Now you lift there. And that pulls out and releases your iPad. First of all, that's very confusing. But this is nice, actually. There's your seat number. Orlando to London. So some stuff here. We got some movies. Let's see if it's actually going to load because we are still on ground. All right. Some stuff here. Oh, I actually downloaded that on my iPad. Not too bad. Crazy Rich Asian. All right. So I see the movies. Let's go back Not real terrible. quick. Not Now, we have food included, but you can buy as you go on this airline. We'll come back to that because I feel like it's going to change. I know what it says is unavailable, so I want to know what's available as we go. Anyway, so here your, is your system. That's your system right there. And then this is your little, if you can see it, I'm guessing this may pop out and it's a remote or I think maybe it doesn't pop out. All right, so in seat controls here, you do not have anything on the back of the chair, which is definitely different from like any other major international airline. I guess this is like a hanger. Here is your AC vent. Here is your light and that's about it. So that's the seat tour. Here's your seat back pocket. Right you do just a, have like a little magazine right and the safety features the bottom, and we will show you guys the windows that, when that we get time. closer because I don't think you can affect it because you have to keep it open for <laughs> departure but uh, you know a little bit of everything so far and um, that's kind of where I'm at now what do you think babe? Did you show the amenity pack? Oh no so here's the amenity pack that we get while you sit. They spring it to you while you sit so yep. here's an eye mask. Here's your eye mask. Show the front. Eye mask. It looks kind of wow. Let me see that. I mean, not the worst, not the best. Not terrible. Oh, I like the little nose blocker right there. Blocks out the extra light. Not bad, not bad. I don't want to play hide and go seek. Okay. Pretty standard earplugs. Oh, they're blue and they're squishy. They're not bad, actually. I like those. I'm going to keep those just in case. Okay. This, I think, is for your headphones. Yeah, headphones. Dang, it's actually a nice little set. Oh, wow. Let me feel. Okay, honestly, not bad. And then you get an extra, look at that. If you don't like those kind of um, earbud types, you get extra squishy ones. That's kind of nice. That's nice. Let's see how it goes. Yep. So again, so far I would say seats are great. A little dirty, but the boarding process and the welcome process, not exactly my favorite. So, you know, for budget, I'm not hating it. Here is the safety thing. It is not a video. Will need will open automatically and release your oxygen mask. Still not taking off. It's supposed to be 825. So we're a little behind. So I called it. I saw three engineers get off the plane while I was on the tarmac earlier. And I was like, that's kind of weird. I told him, I said, I think there may be something wrong with the engine because it's being stalled. They just restarted the plane for technical difficulties. We were on the tarmac. Hold on. He comes on. The, the pilot comes on. He goes, um, so real quick, minor issue. We're having a technical issue with the engines. We're going to shut them off. And turn them back on. And turn them back so on. And we'll wait here about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. There was four engineers that walked off this plane earlier. And I'm not kidding you. Like, we're on the tarmac. Like, in the line to, like... Now, we are flying eight hours over the Atlantic Ocean. It happens, but I wouldn't be surprised, unfortunately, if they said this flight wouldn't fly. That is scary. All right, we'll see how it goes. An hour later, 9.18, technical difficulties got solved. And we are now king off. So now we will show you food service when it comes. The sweetest attendant came through. They did drink service. We have two menus yet. Carson got a Coke. Down that real quick. They don't do individual bottles like on British. They actually just pour from one big bottle into a cup. But it's very cold because premium drinks are included. Oh, they are? Yeah, at least to a certain amount, like usually. And the still water is actually very cold and very good. So we'll see, uh, we'll see when the food menu's come and what the food looks like. And the three of them are passed out. Where it says was a free pint, so it'll be free. So we'll bring it back. Alrighty, so there's two options, a salmon or a risotto, um, vegetarian or seafood. This is the risotto. Look how cute their salt and pepper shakers are though. It's a little Norwegian ship and it's a little terrifying, but I've seen worse. more like ravioli. I think she meant ravioli. You get, oh, a whopping wood, wood pork. Alright, okay, hold on, there's some juice underneath. Oh, it might not be as bad as it looks. Lasagna, it needs salt, pepper, but they do give that to you. For airplane food, airplane food, I would say like 5.5 5 out of 10. 5 out of 10. Okay. 5 out of 10. Oh, well, that smells nice. It smells really good. And then. That is a salad. With a piece, piece of, of ham? ham? Uh, I think I'm going to skip on that one. Definitely not British Airways, but not 
as actually probably what I was expecting. I'll tell you what, the I salmon the does not smell at Sorry, all. It's completely wrong. She said asparagus and broccolini. That actually kind of looks somewhat decent. Try the broccolini. I feel like that's not bad. It's not bad. Okay. 4.5. Just like a solid 5 out of 10. Accumulative. 5 out of 10. So, I mean, kind of what I expected. I don't know. It's a little weird. It's a little cafeteria vibe. But, I mean, for a budget airline, it's not terrible. But you are in the best of the best. So, something to think about. There you have it. We will probably see you guys. I said they're going to turn off the lights here in a bit. We are going to sleep with our pillow and our blanket. And then show you guys whatever breakfast service there is. This is me saying good morning to you guys. Sorry the microphone just was not working for this clip with the refurb of the airplane noise in the background. So we're gonna do a quick voiceover for this part. So they were coming around with breakfast. Now their breakfast options um, definitely were not ideal. There was only one option and it was breakfast salmon. However, we had a really nice stewardess who did bring me the kids like entree, which was probably an option for the evening, but it did look all right. It was like cheese and arugula and tomatoes, but just definitely not a breakfast selection. There was applesauce, unsweetened, very good. There was also a yogurt, uh, just a plain, I think, Greek yogurt, and it also did come with like a cold piece of bread in a bag. Now here is a look at the only breakfast option they do serve. Again, you get the applesauce and the yogurt. This is the breakfast salmon with uh, corn, beans, tomatoes, uh, some type of sauce, and I want to say that's maybe like celery or cucumber or zucchini. I don't know, guys. Uh, leave it down below in the comments. I think it's just about the weirdest breakfast. I guess it is Norse, so, you know, Norway, they're big into salmon. But for me, this was a little far-fetched for a breakfast meal. Just to give you an idea, again, the windows are, there's not actual pull-down shades. It's these little, I guess, automatic. That would be all the way. And this, to give you an idea, is halfway. And then when you do go all the way, it's very bright, so... Very interesting window concept. Oh yeah, here is how far back you can go. really really far back. Yeah. A little weird. Uh, everyone gets the blankets that you guys saw. Apparently they come by and they collect them. Yep, they sure do. So I guess they wash them and then reuse them? A little, a little odd. How about that? Alright, so recap on Norse. We got off a plane and then we got crazy, so we this is another day or so afterwards. Overall, for the price point, I would definitely fly again. Now, that being said, would I prefer American or Virgin? Absolutely. But for the price point, the extra, let's say 700 bucks it is, I would say fly Norse 100%. The food is average at best. I will give you that. There was a cold salmon salad for breakfast. That was the only option that was a little weird and kind of disgusting. Um, just very average food. The seats, I've never had a bigger seat in my life on a plane ever, even with a nicer class. It was huge, it leaned all the way back. I had so much space, biggest seat ever. The uh, stewardess and all the other staff were super sweet, super kind. I think that they came around with wine and water and whatever you needed all the time. I never waited for anything, really. Yeah, not to cut you off, it was kind of cool. Uh, the stewardess actually just brought around two bottles of wine mm -hmm. and just, and just wanna... kept filling up cups. Yep, did so, pop off? Yeah. So, so literally she just popped two bottles, walked around, and just filled them. It was kind of crazy. Yep, it was nice. And uh, they came and got your trash. And, you know, the entertainment in the thing isn't always the best, but we bring our own, so it's not a big deal. Their bathrooms never had a line, which nope. I thought was really crazy. I don't know how that so was every possible. time I wanted to go, it was wide open. Wide open, and it was a smooth, uh, smooth flight. The pilot came on a couple times and informed us with a bunch of stuff. So overall, I would fly again for the price point. It is not going to be comparable to a British or Virgin. It's just not. For what? a budget flight, I would fly it all day long, never look back, yep. uh, and I would fly it again 100%. Yep. If you're okay with no internet because you don't need it and you can download movies and you're okay with no food, I would recommend just eating before, Yep. then I think it's an absolute no-brainer. Bring some snacks, eat before, just screw the meals, it's just not worth it. Yep. Um, but overall, better than expected, not the best of the best, but for the price point, I would 100% fly again. For the price point, I'd give it like a 9 out of 10, honestly. Yeah. I was pleasantly surprised. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and watch other videos in Europe.